Hello and welcome to Boom In Your Face, a platform for indie artists and musicians to come and share their new music or projects, as well as discuss topics about the music industry and the community at large. Boom In Your Face has two meanings. One is that boom in your face from the music that you're listening to, but the other boom in your face is when someone assumes the situation is one way and boom in your face is totally wrong and something totally different. So on occasion, we discuss those boom in your face moments, so watch out that someone might be you. Listeners, if you'd like to share your Boom In Your Face music or projects, or share your Boom In Your Face moment, or just want to join us in the conversation, reach out and email me at boominyourface616 at gmail.com, or visit the website and sign up for the newsletter, like, subscribe, and share the episodes. I'm your host, Mary Kearney. Welcome. Hey, Mary. (laughs) How are you? I'm doing great, beautiful. How's your day going? Oh, my day is going well. Thank you for asking. Thank you for the compliment. I love it all. How are things uh, boom in your face? <laughs> Booming. How about that? <laughs> good, good. Yeah, I'm sorry about the picture. <laughs> it's the only and unique you. You can't be nobody else but you, right? That's how this world is. <laughs> exactly. People trying to be emulating everything. It was great. Uh, it was so nice sitting with uh, you and your husband and son and everything and getting to know you. Thanks for being uh, a smiley face. Well, thank you for wanting to even engage. The podcast was kind of about. Absolutely. Right. So, welcome to Booming Your Face podcast. It's always a pleasure when um, I see you out there. Seeing you at PodFest again was awesome. You did a great job hosting and having everybody being put at ease because as a speaker, yes, you need that reassurance from the guidance of who's hosting. So you did an excellent job doing that. <laughs> well, basically, I'm the loud, obnoxious guy, but thank you. Whoop, whoop. Well, that's what you need. To, that distraction to get you off of in your head. That's exactly what you need. <laughs> Well, I wish I had the catchphrase, boom, in your face. That would have been perfect. Well, listen, now you do. So now you know to use it when you speak to any and everybody, just say boom in your face. Just go with it. Uh, You got to listen to the boom in your face. Right. right. Listen to Mary on the podcast. That's right. And just give everybody a good boom when they think they're telling you one thing and then boom in your face is not what you thought. Is that ultimate surprise? (laughs) (laughs) That's what Exactly. So we... We've both been in the restaurant business. You had a lot of success, you and your husband in the restaurant business. Yes. I've owned a couple of restaurants. Uh, I know there's uh, entrepreneurs out there that are thinking about the restaurant business. Mm-hmm. And after my many years of owning a restaurant, I would say, stop. <laughs> well, yes, you'll say that. And then you'll say in another way, if that's your passion, listen, you got to give it a try. Throw your hat in right, there, right? That's but no, it's work. Yeah, a lot of work and a lot of, uh, uh, you know, what was interesting about the restaurant business was, and I think people need to know this, that unlike other businesses, uh, like when I owned the comedy clubs, I had right. a set amount of cost. And the more sales I got, the cost stayed constant. So if I was doing well, I was making money. Right. But because the restaurant business is based on employees and food, Correct. As your business goes up, your food and staffing costs go up. So Tell you only have a thin margin all the time. Exactly. You have a thin margin for error. Trust me. And right now with eggs being the price that it is and using bakery goods. Oh, my goodness. I could just imagine all the restaurateurs that are going through that. And then, you know, your customers don't want to hear that it's costing me eight to ten dollars a dozen i gotta go up with my price all they want to know is i can afford what you're trying to sell me because i'm on a budget too so it's like a ballet right and i think that uh you know like you said if you have a passion for it and you really understand the risk going in it can be very rewarding i know that uh it was always a pleasure to see people enjoying my recipes enjoying the food Right. And so it is kind of a, a give and take. Well, at some point, at some point, because my youngest one, like I was telling you, wants to go into that field, I will open up a actual brick and mortar location. 
However, it'll be on my land somewhere in the back where I could get in my golf cart, drive to the restaurant, help him out, get back in it and go on my way. There That's you go. The way I'm willing to do it. Keep it close, baby. That's right. It doesn't matter. It won't matter to me what is going, you know, it'll be less of everything. As you know, as you know, all the overhead, all the things that go into it. Yes. I'm going to keep it right there close to home. Yeah, and we're joking a little, little bit, but it is true. When I at my chain of comedy clubs, I opened one in Stockton, which is about 40 minutes south. Okay. And even though it was only 40 minutes, it was difficult and expensive to get there, to right. staff it. You know, I had to pay a manager for their, to, to drive it and stay there. It was, uh, it's, you're making a good point. You want to live where you work. Correct. And, and, and when you own a restaurant, you're there all day anyway. Correct. There you go. So you want to be able to get home as quick as possible because you're going to be right back there churning again. Right, right, now, right. Now, you had some great recipes and uh, yeah. you were doing uh, barbecue and a few other things. Uh, what, what type of food did you really enjoy serving? Out of all the things I've enjoyed on my menu, the cheesecakes, because each time oh, you I told had, me about those. Yes, because each time someone would taste the cheesecake, it was like life changing to some people. Manna from heaven. Woo! Yes, it was like heaven. I should have named it heavenly cheesecake. Really, I thought about it at one point because I'm not trying to oversell anything. This is the God honest truth that. The pleasure that I would get from people actually eating it, and especially the ones that said, oh, I don't like cheesecake, or I don't try it. Now, I've, out of 100 people, I would get two or three people to say, I don't like cheesecake, and I might convert one. Eh, so everything's not for everybody. But the pleasure of me just d coming up with the, me and being blessed with the recipes, that's the first thing. Because when I opened up my restaurant, I only knew one type of cheesecake and that was original New York that was in me. So that's well, I think I you, And you told me you ended up with like a hundred different kinds of cheesecake. 300, but I'm not counting. <laughs> yes. I mean, well, cheesecake wedding cakes and stuff like that. I mean, it's just a whole thing. Wow. Well, I just glad that when we were together at Podfest, you promised me a cheesecake next Christmas. That's right. <laughs> it's on its way. Don't worry about <laughs> it. You might get it before Christmas. How about that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> just don't blame me when you well, I think your mouth and you want more yeah, there you go <laughs> well when I opened my restaurant I was telling you it's it was called sticky fingers it was because I had kind of unique barbecue recipe okay. a barbecue sauce recipe but we just mm -hmm. did chicken and wings and it was in a tourist area okay so it was kind of get them in get them out and good, uh, we had some success with it. <laughs> Sounds like it. I mean, it's always yeah. great to, to be in a tourist area. And now that I'm in like the capital of tourism, yes, I could see that being a quick key as like a, a kiosk kind of situation, but not the main headquarters. Like I'm telling you that I would stand at. But the um the most famous food food item on my menu was the Big Daddy beef ribs. Oh, the big beef ribs. Yes, that's big a, Daddy that's beef a lot. Oh, Those goodness. actually more work to prepare. Tell me about it. Yes, but I would smoke those babies for eight to 12 hours and talking about something Ooh, delicious. You got to try sounds it. Sounds good already. You're right. You're going to have to try it now. We're making everybody hungry. <laughs> we're in here talking about entertainment and we're going right into the food part of it. But I mean, that's a part of entertainment as well. Because just because you provide right. the, well, the food piece. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. a lot of people don't realize I tell them I own the chain of uh, comedy clubs. I had three along with the two restaurants. But when you have a comedy club, you have to serve food and drink. Correct. So I actually owned several bars, mm. and that's a whole different beast. Tell me and, about it. Right, and then serving food. Correct. So I was serving comedy, food, and alcohol. And uh, you have to learn a lot of uh, unique aspects of business because they're yes. all different. Correct. And you wear so many hats. And then for all those that are trying to get into the restaurant business and you want to have a bar, is two different entities you're dealing with. One, you're dealing with the health department for the food, but then you're dealing with the ABC office about all liquor. So, I mean, they could pop up at any time because I was open from 11 a.m. to 3 a.m. in the morning. So at two o'clock in the morning, one of the agents would come in and just say, okay, let me see your books. And anybody that deals with alcohol knows what I'm talking about. And you have to have record yeah. of everything that's going on. Have you yeah, ever we had, had a scary, We had a scary moment during a festival. There was a jazz festival going on. And I had a young um, employee selling beer out on the patio. Okay. And his girlfriend showed up and he got distracted. 
and he didn't ID somebody okay. Well, the person he didn't ID was an ABC officer. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there was a large fine to pay. And uh, I mean, they wanted to arrest him. I was like, come right. on. You know, I mean, I talked I him out of it, but it was, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, those are all the things that can happen with dealing with all that, but it can be rewarding. But I would say if someone's going into the restaurant business that they really need to have someone that's had experience doing it to help save you a lot of the things you're going to learn that are costly on your own. Because when I opened up my restaurant, I had 32 employees. That's ridiculous. Wow. That's ridiculous because you know, that cuts into your profits, but me thinking, oh, I want to help everyone that I know that needs a job, that's in the community, this, that, and the other. But I wasn't thinking business-wise on being strategic. Although, thank God I made the revenue in order to pay these people, but it still cut into what could have been profit and turning and all of that. Well, you make it a good point. Having employees is one of the toughest things about owning a business. At the peak of my business, I had 110 employees. Wow. And just the, the taxes, the paperwork, the fees, keeping yes. it all straight. There's a lot of legalities. Again, mm -hmm. it's not, you can, you can overcome it and deal with it, but it is um, stressful. Correct. It is. It's very stressful, especially when you get the employees that want to work until they got a job and then they don't want to work no more, but they still want to get paid on payday. Have you had the beauty of that? <laughs> <laughs> I've had many of those. Yeah, I'll, right. I'll come in and I'm like, okay, why are they on break for the last two hours? And I'm in here working and grinding and everything. Mm -mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. They don't have the same commitment that the owner does because we have the passion. Correct. And we know what is on the backside of that passion is a bill waiting to be paid, your vendors, your <laughs> utilities, if you want to stay there. Right. 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 So how did you, Mary, how did you end up uh, in podcasting? You're so creative and you have so many talents. What brought you to uh, the microphone? Well, what brought me to the boom was me ah, starting ah, off. Ah. <laughs> That's right. Was me actually starting off with the artists that I was working with. And when I was working with the artists, they didn't have that skill set yet in order to do public speaking, in order to have a voice inside of this mega drum of entertainment world, you know, it's, and it's hard to get into the traditional spots on the radio, this, that, and the other. So I said, well, create it. That's what you have to do. If it doesn't exist for you, you have to create your niche in the world. So I decided to open it up to give all the independent artists, creatives, and all of that an opportunity to have a voice and to share their beautiful music, poetry, art, their stories, whatever it may be with the world without yeah. it being a long trail to get to it. Well, I noticed that you were very, very supportive of the music industry. Yeah. I went the other way. I was doing uh, stand up comedy, but it was back uh, before you were born in 1980. You're right. And I was working with, <laughs> I was working with, uh, you know, Bob Saget, Dana Carvey, Jerry Seinfeld, Jay Leno. They all worked for me. But wow. back before they were famous. Okay. Um, and this is uh, in California. It, it, New was, York. it was nice, California. Okay. Because I used to see them in New York. But in not oh, right, right. But not 1980 because I wasn't here yet. <laughs> okay. Well, like I said, I'm an, uh, I had the pleasure of working with them mm -hmm. when they were just getting started. In, in fact, one of the guys uh, in 1981 that was on my stage, he had a new sitcom called Bosom Buddies, and he had to do a comedy set, and he needed to learn how to do stand-up, and Bob Saget was teach, uh, writing the material for him. Okay. He worked it out on my stage, and then a week later, he did it on his TV show, Bosom Buddies, and of course, that was Tom Hanks. All right, now, Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah, now, of course, this was not the Tom Hanks we all know and love now, who's super famous. It was his very first TV show, but he did work my club for a week, and it was uh, exciting to see the the comedy he did at my club that Bob Saget helped him write on the right. TV show just a few weeks later. You know, I have a similar story because that's why I say you can't overlook people because they're just beginning because we all start somewhere. And to open up the mic to whoever wants to step forward is a beautiful thing because you're helping someone nurture their craft. Now, I had a young lady, a country singer, come on my show a couple of years ago, Jesse Ritter. Now she has a country TV show. So, I mean, you never know where people are going to grow and blossom. 
but you right. want to help she, them. She put you on the show. Ah, you know Did what? She put you on Not the yet. show. Not yet. I'm gonna have to ask Jesse about that because I'm gonna say, listen, I can put on my barbecue at the pit and we can talk shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had the pleasure of helping a lot of guys get kind of famous. And mm -hmm. I did get, when they would do the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, mm -hmm. uh, I was invited down and, and was able to go backstage in the green room at the Tonight Show. Okay. I was able to meet Johnny a couple times and get, get to see these guys do their first shot on the Tonight Show, which back in the day pretty much made a career. Correct. You know, a lot of people don't know about here's Johnny. You know, we, we're going back in time right now with some of them. Sorry. But Sorry, I'm old. Go, listen, we can only talk about what we know, right? We can't go with everything. But I mean, this is history, but people need to know that, you know, reality TV was a different format. Because if you think about it, that was reality TV in its beginning stages. Right. Right. And all the talk right. shows. And it, well, you know, it's so funny when you talk to young people today, Mary, because mm -hmm. back when I was growing up, I won't throw <laughs> you in the pot. But you but can't. There was all right. Four TV channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was only four TV channels, not 400. Right. There was no internet, no computers. There was no cell phones. Uh, we did listen to the radio. We did read newspapers. Yes. It was just, it was a different time. Correct. And um, I'm thankful for the experiences I've had, but it's also exciting to see what uh, young people are, are growing up with today. If we could just get them to get their face out of their phone. <laughs> 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 then they'll be able to talk straight to you, right? But well, right. I don't know how that's going to happen. I don't see that happening at all. We're just going to have to deal with... Well, you know what they're doing. They're going to invent those glasses that are going to become... They have them already, but for personal use is being worked out on how they can walk around with those glasses on and have the phone and everything right there in front of their eyes. We're going to have everybody walking right into traffic. <laughs> <laughs> well, there won't be no cars, Right. Because yeah, oh. <laughs> we won't be driving. We'll be in, I don't want to plug nobody, but you know, we'll be in no I don't know. that drive. It, it could be good for you, Mary. <laughs> it could be good for you, Mary, because they'll be walking around with the glasses and boom, there's a car. There you boom go. in your face. That's right. And everybody will have that big stick of the flash right on up in that in the glasses. Right, right. Well, I should take a moment and plug my podcast because I had all those years in comedy. Yes. I wrote a book about it and nobody wanted to read the book. So I created a podcast called Stand Up Comedy, Your Host and MC. And on that podcast, I get to share all the humor from people like Bob Saget and Gary Shandling and Jerry Seinfeld. And also I do interviews with professionals, uh, entertainers from the industry and so the combination of the new and the old, it's, uh, I think it's a good podcast. I think that's I'm what, proud of it. You should be proud of your work. Else why would you be doing it? Boom. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. I mean, we usually yeah, start only this off, is I mean, stand up comedy usually, in your face. That's right. We usually start off with you introducing yourself and saying all those things, but we got right into the conversation. I know everyone followed us through, but we we're going to. Well, that's because we're old friends, Mary. That's right. We just went right into it and we know everybody knows you, Scott. So there it is. But yes, what's the name of your podcast again? Say it again. So it's Scott Edwards. I live in Sacramento, California. I've been on the fringe of show business for over 42 years. Mm -hmm. And my podcast is Stand Up Comedy. You're hosting MC. And if you're looking for a good stand up comedy podcast, I have a new network called the Pod uh, Stand Up Comedy Podcast Network. See, even I, it's new to me, Stand Up Comedy Podcast Network. You might have seen it at PodFest. <laughs> right, exactly. But I, I heard that boom in there. So I, I think there's a show slot coming in there for me with that comedy. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Boom in your face comedy. How about that? I, I think it's perfect. And you and I can be a tag team hosting set. <laughs> exactly. I think everybody would enjoy it. The old guy and the young lady. That's right. They have all the old history in the head because I'm, I'm a history. Well, guy. no, I'll, I was you, you didn't, I was saying I'll be the old guy and you could be the young, beautiful one. Yes, I took that. I received it, but I said I would know all of the, what you know because I have I'm a history buff. So that's the only reason why I would know the things you oh. know in history. The young woman. There you go. Studied history. There you go. You gotta stay with me now. So that sounds like a doable. Well, I'm gonna test life. your history. 
Okay. So talk about boom in your face. I'm going to test your history. Mm -hmm. Back in the 50s and 60s, there was a very popular comic. He had his own TV show, and he was famous for throwing pies in the face of presidents and famous movie stars and other famous people. Do you remember who threw a pie in the face of celebrities? Mm -hmm. The yeah. answer is Soupy Sales. Oh, Soupy Sales, yes. Do you remember Soupy Sales? Yes, I remember Soupy Sales. And Sales. I had the honor of having, I had Soupy Sales on my stage and Soupy Sales threw a pie in my face. Oh, that's made you famous instantly. You'll never forget it. Boom in your face. That's right. See, it been going the whole time. It was threatened through history. See, I was thinking Bob See, Hope. See, it, it started. Oh, no, Soupy Sales was kind of after Bob Hope and before, you know, Jay Leno and those guys. Yes. But see, kind of the same time as George Carlin. Yes, I, he oh, was doing comedy about thing. the same yeah. time. And yeah, George Carlin, Joan Rivers. Now we're testing the people that are uh, under fifty to go to Googler. <laughs> go to the palms. See, they'll be back in the phones again. We gotta keep them off the phones. We gotta get them to think about it or research it somehow. Go to a book. How about the encyclopedia? Who owns a cycle? Yeah, there you go. There's there, right? boom in your face. <laughs> Not many you know, people have cycle. It's funny. I, I, that in my house, we had the World Book Encyclopedia, and it was like thirty volumes of stuff, and it was uh, it was your go to place when you had to do homework and stuff. That's right. And like you said, they don't even exist anymore. And I used to love sitting. It's there. like the dial phone; they're all gone. I know the road yeah. phones. Yeah. So what's next for you, Mary? What's what what's next on Boom in Your Face? Well, the, what's next for me coming up in Boom in Your Face is I'm gonna start trying to do uh like a monthly panel for some of the uh episodes. So it won't just be me, it'll be me, you, Scott, and a few other people, and we'll sit around and we'll just talk shop and let people, you know, chime in on what they might want to hear from each person. How about that? Well, I tried something similar uh, about once a month. I do what's called a comedy round table. Okay. Where I have two or three professional entertainers and I, mm -hmm. and we, like you said, we just talk shop mm -hmm. and share stories. See, now my main company, All About Entertainment, falls under that umbrella because each genre, even though you do comedy, I'm doing music piece and some people are doing film you know, people from different genres. And we talk about in cross network because you can't do a movie that's not, that doesn't have some humor in it to a degree, right? Without music, see what I mean? Inter it's all interconnected. Oh yeah. And they all have a way of uh, reaching a different entertainment level for the, for the audience, right? Right. So we all need to laugh. Mm -hmm. Music soothes the savage beast. Right. And we need the acting for our visual pleasure. There you go. It's all together. So what's uh, next? It's, um, I tend to book ahead. I have shows in the can through September, okay. but I'm doing a, a real good interview on Monday with the uh, chief financial officer for the Comedy Store. You okay. may have heard of the Comedy Store in Hollywood, yes. California, owned by Mitzi Shore, Been to the, uh, store the mother of Polly Shore. Right. And he was the CFO. So it'll be interesting to talk to him about the business side of comedy back in the 80s and 90s. Well, you know all about that. So you can. That's true. Yeah, so I mean, we'll story. have that in common. Mm -hmm. Yo, we'll have right. a war right. story. Right, right. But I um, really thought that uh, doing the comedy club was a real passion. I really enjoyed every night of work. I was on stage. I know this will surprise you, Mary. Mm -hmm. I was on stage every night. Really? Not you, as shy as you are? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know. I thought you'd be shocked by that. Mm -hmm. Hey, everybody, boom in your face. I like the stage. <laughs> I'm going to put you on my commercial. I'm going to put you right on everything. Boom in your face. Every time somebody clicks something, you're going to jump up with boom in your face to them. Yeah, and then we'll, <laughs> we'll just tell them that uh, you're my sister and we'll really confuse them. Correct. Well, you never know. You never know. You could be my brother from another mother. There you go. Well, I feel like I am. My heart is with you, Mary. I appreciate it. I can feel the love flowing back and forth. Now, let me ask you this. Now, exactly. You do you still do anything with restaurants or you walked away from that? No, I'm done with restaurants. I still produce comedy shows, but they're all fundraisers now. Okay. I help uh, charities raise money 
through producing comedy shows for them. I have one coming up in a couple months for a uh, adult rehabilitation center called More. Mm -hmm. And I bring up a professional entertainer from Los Angeles. And we usually raise uh, $50,000, $60,000. So it's nice. Oh, that's awesome. I, I'm going to really date myself now. There was a very talented actor named mickey rooney oh, and he I used to uh, do these yeah he used to do movies and he'd say we got a barn let's do a show that's right go on and get it yes right. you talk about all the great so uh, i could pretty much do i could pretty much do a show anywhere mary well that's awesome well god bless you with all yeah. the charity that you're doing but that's what you know people that have all these gifts and talents like you do that's what it turns out to become that we help people with the gifts we help the nonprofit right my, my ability yeah. you're exactly right i have the ability to control a crowd entertain a crowd and i know how to produce a show whether it's music comedy uh whatever it is i know how to make it professionally done for the audience to have the best enjoyment and that's a a, a gift or a skill that i've developed over decades and it's just nice in my senior years i can share that and help uh, charities and, and other groups. So let me ask you this question. Have you ever done a fundraiser for a church? I, I have not been approached by a church per se, but I have done a couple uh, very clean um, shows for uh, special occasions at a church. Okay. So it, it is possible, but I haven't been approached by a church per se. But I think that people are nervous, especially in this counterculture society, mm -hmm. this kind of woke society. People are nervous about stand-up comedy. It is kind of the last bastion of free speech. Okay. So it is uh, people are nervous about what somebody's going to say or do. Might somebody be offended? You know, all of a sudden we're a nation of really thin-skinned people. Isn't and, it sad? Uh, we need to get back to the, you know, where you, you can say something and we know it's all meant in humor. Correct. You remember Don Rickles? Of course, I know Don Rickles. Do you remember Don? Imagine him doing his act now. I know, a lot of them. It would be very challenging for somebody as, as funny and gifted as he is an actor and a, as a comic. Mm -hmm. In today's, um, you know, thin-skinned society, he would, yeah, he would be run out of town on a rail. <laughs> <laughs> It won't be no laughter behind it. Right, right. But I think it's kind of sad that people have forgotten how to laugh at themselves. You know, right. we can't, you know, we're all human beings. We all have our piccadillies and, and issues. And if we can't uh, uh, laugh at them, um, it, it can be very detrimental to society. So I hope, I think the pendulum is coming back. So hopefully we'll get through it soon. Yes. Now, you said you haven't been approached by a church, so I'm approaching you. So we'll talk about that in another time. Well, it's uh, just, just great to be here on your podcast. Is there any topic that uh, your audience might find interesting, like I used to own a submarine? I think they would find that interesting. You used to own a submarine? Yep. The yellow I, submarine? I was a part, I'm sorry? I said the yellow submarine? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a big white submarine it was a tourist submarine mm -hmm. um i put it in monterey california okay and i ran it for about a year and a half and i lost my ass mary wow <laughs> and how did that happen it was a big financial it was a big financial loss i did sell it to the wrigley gum family it's still operating in catalina island in southern california okay. but for me it was just fun to do and it was exciting to do but financially mm -hmm. a huge loss so you sometimes you lose win. well a lot of times you lose but you got to recover is what the thing is, is to learn out the lesson in the loss and be able to come back well, i mean i shouldn't have been surprised a submarine went under <laughs> okay there you go you should have did some comedy tours underwater with it exactly hey, do you want to see atlantis get in the submarine and then when it gets in the room in your face, is a joke. But what made you buy a exactly. submarine, really? Um, I was part owner of a company called Snuba. It's all around the world. It's underwater snorkeling. And okay. the people that uh, had that company built and developed a submarine, and they asked me to help them launch it at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. And okay. I'm sitting there working on it, and I go, I want one of these. So I bought one. <laughs> well, it's nice to have that kind of um, dispensable income to say, you know what? 
let me go on and get that submarine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a lot of fun. And my point of sharing the story, Mary, is that mm -hmm. uh, as an entrepreneur, whether it's a restaurant, a comedy club, or a submarine, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But right. I always had fun. And I don't have any regrets about the submarine because uh, for me and for my children, it was a fun experience. And now for the rest of my life, I get to say, I own a submarine. There you go. This, you got a story out of it. Yeah, it's a very costly one. I know everybody thought you was insane. <laughs> a little crazy. Well, you got to be a little bit, you know, to be so carefree it, with business sometimes, taking some risk. You got to be a little bit on the other side of it. That's for sure. And and mm -hmm. we were telling uh, the restaurant entrepreneurs, that, you know, it's always risky. It's always hard work. And you just have to go for it, especially like you said, Mary, if you have a passion. That's right. Let me go back a few clicks. Tell me about your family. You've been married for over 40 years, you said. How many children? Was, no, was... no. No? No, 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 no. I, I, I've been in stand-up comedy for over 40 years. Uh, okay. And even though marriage can be funny, I haven't been in a marriage that long. <laughs> okay. Um, I was married briefly. I was married briefly for about a year and a half okay. when I was young. And I have uh, uh, two children, one my own son, and I adopted a young lady. So I have a boy and a girl, uh, but they're like in their 40s now. My okay. son's a professor at the University of San Diego. Okay. And then my yeah. new bride uh, mm -hmm. will be celebrating uh, 23 years of marriage here soon. Oh, and no, um, <laughs> uh, Yes, yes, my bride. <laughs> Congratulations. That's awesome though. 23 years. Well, we love children, time. but we, right, right. Well, we, we love children, but uh, we weren't able to have any. So I have my two from the previous marriage, but mm -hmm. we have godchildren, we have nieces and nephews, and, and it's just about sharing that love for children with any, you know, buddy you can be around and, and help raise. It's, it's been a real joy. Well, that's it. It starts with the love of children. So that way you can have an open heart to help others like you do. That's why you probably do so much charitable work is because you love people and you love children. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, good for you all. That's a wonderful life to live of service. So I always commend anybody because I'm that kind of person as well. I love giving back. I love helping people best I can. That's what brings me to joy. Right. And that's why we do podcasts because we're sharing our story yes. to both entertain and educate those around us. Right, Mary? Yes, exactly what we're and doing. And if we do it right, we boom in their face. <laughs> exactly. And they'll get the point, the message that might not be right there in their face. Because sometimes the message that you need to receive is not what is just the main topic. Because look how we started on talking about podcasting, because that's really what we were talking about. Podcasting is the gist of the conversation, but it's really more than that. It's more about life journeys is what we've been covering and taking risks, what's involved with the risk to do an analysis and a risk assessment on what's going to happen. And then just go for it and just understand that there will be pitfalls, but just get back up. And what hard work. Hard work. Right. And as you said, hard work. Well, Mary, it's been such a joy to be on your podcast. And uh, again, at PodFest, it was so great to see your beautiful smile and spend time with your husband and your son and you. Thank you so much for the uh, openness and, and uh, fun that we got to share in, in Orlando. Oh, well, you're more than welcome. And thank you for coming on and talking with me and us chatting it up. And one, um, I'll do you the favor of coming on your show. How about that? Uh We'll have to talk about that. We, you know, the only rule about my show is you have to be a stand-up comic. So we'll just have to get you on stage. Well, you know, I don't and like then, you on stage. Mary. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah, I think you'd be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. But I appreciate you being on, and I hope your audience gets a chance to check out my podcast, Stand Up Comedy, your host and MC. And I hope they keep supporting you, Mary, and all the great work you're doing. And everybody, get out there and boom in your face. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, thanks so much. I really appreciate you, and I appreciate everything you bring to the world. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you doing this. And you have a great night. Listeners, I want to thank you again for joining me for another episode of Boom in Your Face. Please remember to support the podcast on the website 
As a reminder, if you'd like to share your Boom In Your Face music or share your Boom In Your Face moments or just want to join in the conversation, reach out and email me at boominyourface616 at gmail or visit the website and sign up for the newsletter and share your stories. I'm your host, Mary Kearney. Be blessed. Boom in your face. Boom in your face. Boom in your face. Boom in your face.